Welcome to the Solar Clips video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. My name is Drew Chavon and I'm an extension specialist with the University of Maryland. In a previous video we looked at the difference between DC and AC power and we also considered how to size and select an inverter that will transform the DC power coming from your solar array into AC power that you'll use for most of your electrical loads. And you can review that video for more information, but in today's video we'll discuss the importance of DC and AC disconnects, what role they play, and how to integrate disconnect switches into your solar electric system. The primary purpose of a disconnect switch is to shut off the flow of incoming power. So DC and AC disconnects are essentially safety switches allowing you to open and close the electrical circuit. And this is done to ensure a safe working environment during any active service or maintenance on the system. These safety switches make it quick and easy to disconnect and reconnect the power within your system. If, for instance, you wanted to turn off power to the inverter, then you could throw this AC disconnect, and this will create a safer environment for anyone that might be working on the equipment downstream, avoiding any possible encounter with live voltage. DC disconnects are switches that complete or interrupt the flow of DC electricity or direct current. In a solar electric system, the DC disconnect, often called a PV disconnect, will be placed between the solar array and the power inverter so that it can easily be thrown if you or the fire department needs to shut off the power coming from the solar array. Safety switches like this are a necessity in most residential and commercial applications in accordance with the National Electric Code, or NEC. And in many cases, a DC disconnect will be built into the inverter itself, as we've seen previously. While this integrated DC disconnect will stop the inverter from producing power, the AC side of the inverter will still be connected to the utility. So while an integrated DC disconnect could save you time and effort during installation, you'll need to check on your local building and utility regulations. In any sense, after the power goes through the inverter, it comes out as AC power or alternating current. And so AC disconnects are typically placed between the inverter and the main service panel in order to separate the inverter from the electrical grid. These can be a standalone switch or a breaker on a service panel, but are typically mounted to the wall between the inverter and the utility meter. Now before we get into any specifics on installing these switches, we'll briefly review a few reasons for integrating the disconnects into a solar electric system. For one, DC and AC disconnects are often required by local ordinances and building codes. If any utility work is being done in the area on electrical lines or transformers, for instance, then the solar system can be disconnected from the grid. So also in the event of a fire, an AC disconnect can stop the inflow of power, lowering the spread of fire and preventing the threat of electrocution for anyone that might be entering the home. DC disconnect can also be used in severe weather events uh, to reduce the risk of damage to the inverter and or the wiring of the system. Both forms of disconnects would also be particularly useful in the event of a flood. In any case, proper integration and installation of disconnect switches will help to ensure a safe electrical system with the ability to quickly shut off any incoming power when necessary. It's for this reason that most building codes will require disconnect switches to be put in place. Now, there are essentially two types of disconnects, fused and unfused. Unfused safety switches provide no circuit protection with their sole purpose being a means to open and close the circuit. Fused safety switches, on the other hand, combine the switch and fuses into a single enclosure to provide that extra level of protection against overcurrent and short circuits. A disconnect must be fused if the available circuit current from the array is capable of exceeding the rated current of the shorted circuit or solar panel. Hence, this usually means that if you have more than two parallel solar panels or strings in a solar array, then you would need overcurrent protection devices, OCPD, combiners, or fuses. With that said, unfused AC disconnect can be used in many applications unless you're doing something like a line-side tap connection, in which case you would need a fused AC disconnect in order to protect the conductors from overcurrent, but more on that later. Now that we've discussed these two options, we'll consider how to size and select appropriate disconnect switches for your system. Disconnects come in a number of different sizes or amperages, typically ranging from 30 to 800 amps. Most residential projects will deal with the 30 to 60 amp range, while larger consumption levels and multi-inverter situations will often deal with 100 amps or higher. In any case, proper planning is necessary to determine the appropriate size for your system. 
This will be based on the size and power output of your PV system, which is a function of your voltage, circuit load, amperage or breaker size, as well as the wiring or cable size. If you include a standalone DC disconnect in your circuit, then you'll have to size it in the same manner as the junction box or the combiner box. And in many cases, the appropriate model for your circuit will be rated for 600 volts DC. You'll likewise have the choice of a fusible or non-fusible switch. In the case of a fusible disconnect, the fuse size that you select will depend on how much current is being carried by each set of conductors coming from the solar array and whether or not you've used a combiner ahead of the disconnect. As we've seen in previous videos, the circuit ampacity will be based on the maximum electrical current, which when working on the DC side of the circuit is equal to the short circuit current, ISC, of each string in the array. And so in this case, we'll multiply the short circuit current, ISC, times the number of strings in the array, times a safety factor of 1.56. And if you recall, the safety factor of 1.56 incorporates two separate factors based on the National Electric Code, or NEC. One factor to account for the continuous current of a circuit, and the other factor providing a cushion against nuisance trips. You'll then select the closest fuse size at or just above this ampacity value as required by the NEC. As you can see in this example, we have an ampacity of 13.42 amps, so we would need to select the 15 amp fuse. The ampacity calculation changes, however, on the AC side of the circuit. In that case, we'd use the maximum or continuous output current for the inverter and multiply that by 1.25. If, for instance, your inverter has a current output of 16.7 amps, then you would simply multiply by 1.25 yielding an ampacity value of 20.88 amps. In this case, we'd need to select a 25 amp fuse on the AC output side. And for the AC disconnect itself, you'd likely choose a 30 amp two pole model. If, however, your inverter was transformerless, then you'd likely select a three pole model in order to fuse the neutral conductor. Now you'll also need to consider the environmental conditions that the disconnect switch will be exposed to. The enclosure itself must be rated for the environment that it's installed in, and since these interconnections are typically installed outside on exterior walls near the electric meter, a NEMA 3R enclosure will usually suffice. Type 3R enclosures protect against falling rain, sleet, snow, and external ice formation. You can review the 2020 NEC 705.11 for more details. Most systems will also require a lockable safety disconnect. Some type of security device or locking mechanism could be implemented on the hatch of this enclosure, for instance, in order to prevent access. Now that we've considered some of the factors involved in selecting a disconnect switch for your system, we'll discuss some of the things that you need to know when installing a disconnect switch. And to do so, we'll take a closer look at this unfused AC disconnect, which would be required with a conventional connection that backfeeds the grid. Local regulations will vary, but Article 690 of the NEC details the electrical requirements for solar PV systems, including system disconnects. With that said, these disconnects are typically mounted outside at the service entrance within 10 or 15 feet or in direct line of sight of your main billing meter, but you'll need to check with your authority having jurisdiction for specific details on placement requirements in your area. External operation allows the power to be quickly and conveniently disconnected. The switch must also be well labeled, but we'll talk about labeling at another time. Now, I've temporarily mounted this AC disconnect for today's demonstration, and I have the disconnect switch in the open or off position. And after turning off the power at the inverter and at the service panel, I've gone ahead and pulled all the wires into the enclosure with the ground wires passing through bonding bushings. And in an actual installation, the wires running to this enclosure would be in conduit. But before we go any further, we'll make sure that none of these wires are energized. So we'll use a multimeter to make sure there's no voltage on the line or the load side of the switch. And once we've confirmed the power is off, we can continue with the installation of this disconnect switch. Now, if this was a fuse disconnect, then we would see some fuses or fuse receptacles on the inside. But since this is an unfused disconnect, we'll simply have a load and a line base assembly. Now the load side connections coming from the inverter will be connected at the bottom of the disconnect switch. In this case, we have a red and black conductor, a white neutral wire, and a green wire for the protective ground. The line side connections at the top of the disconnect switch, on the other hand, will be connected to the electrical service panel. 
The line side connections for a 240 volt system likewise have red and black conductors. So as you can see, both sides of the switch, including the load and the line side connections, will be energized when the system is turned on. But it's equally important to recognize that the line side assembly is always energized with power coming from the service panel. So the line side connections will be energized even when the system is turned off. Now to make the necessary connections inside this enclosure, we'll start by stripping away about 3 8 of an inch of insulation from the end of each wire. Then we'll connect the line side ground to the equipment grounding bus bar by inserting the green wire into an available lug. This provides a pathway to ground. Then we'll connect the red and black conductors from the main service panel to the line side of the disconnect switch by inserting each conductor into the top of the assembly and tightening the corresponding main lug. Then we'll connect the neutral wire from the main service panel to the neutral bus bar, and this completes the line side connections. And we'll simply repeat this process for the load side connections. So we'll connect the load side ground to the equipment grounding bus bar, the red and black conductors into the bottom of the assembly, and the white neutral from the inverter into the neutral bus bar. Now we could have pulled the neutral wire all the way through this enclosure, or we could have used a wire nut to connect both ends of the neutral wire depending on the application, but in this case we'll simply ensure that all of the terminals have been tightened appropriately. And if this was a fused system, then you could simply insert the fuses into the assembly. But being that this is an unfused system, we've already completed the AC disconnect. So once the system is up and running, with the switch closed or turned on, we should have AC power on the line side coming from the main service panel and AC power on the load side coming from the inverter. Well, I hope this video has provided you with an understanding of how and why disconnect switches are integrated into solar electric systems. In upcoming videos, we'll consider other aspects of solar inverters, electrical grounding, and other topics as well. You can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of this Solar Clips video series. But in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar, photovoltaics, and other energy-related topics.